Hola, welcome to my Spanish kitchen. This is where I have fun making super tasty dishes all based on Spain's incredibly healthy Mediterranean diet. So if you'd like to learn some true Spanish classics, go ahead and click that subscribe button below and join me today as we make ajo blanco, an incredibly refreshing, cool, and silky soup from the south of Spain. Now, while it's called ajo blanco, which translates to white garlic or white gazpacho, it has very little garlic in it. In fact, only a half a clove. The dominant flavor are almonds. And I've selected 150 grams of Marcona almonds because they're buttery and creamy, and I love what they do to this soup to make it extra silky and smooth. We're also going to add 75 grams of the interior of this loaf of bread so that we get a little bit of heft and meatiness to the soup, even though it's nice and smooth and creamy. The next ingredient is a little bit of sea salt. We'll probably use a teaspoon to two teaspoons of Mediterranean sea salt. Two tablespoons of Jerez sherry vinegar. You can use any vinegar, any sherry vinegar that is. I recommend Jerez because it's fermented in oak barrels in the south of Spain. It's incredibly rich and floral, fruity, has a depth of flavor that you're gonna come to love. I'm also using 60 milligrams of Arbequina olive oil. It's very mild, it's very fruity, and it's an olive oil you can find almost anywhere in the United States. And I'd recommend it for this soup because anything stronger is gonna overcome that delicate flavor of the almonds. Finally, 500 milliliters of water, give or take. We'll see how it goes in the blender, and if it's a little too thick, I'll add some more until we just get it to the consistency of a really nice pour. The other ingredients that are on this side of the table are all about garnish, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I have some really nifty tips and tricks from some top Spanish chefs that are different than the traditional garnish of green grapes. So let's get started. Making the soup really couldn't be any easier. I'm going to add the almonds first. And here's a trick that I didn't happen to do, but it's a great idea. Put some of the water in with these almonds overnight. You'll see them plump up quite a bit. They'll absorb more moisture, especially if it's not first of the season. Right now, where we live, it's almond season. Everyone's harvesting the hundreds of thousands of almond trees that are all around the Gijona Valley where we live. So having fresh, plump almonds isn't a problem for me, but I'd suggest that add some water overnight to them and let them soak. It's a good idea. The second ingredient I'm going to add is the 75 grams of soft white bread. Just break it up into chunks so it's a little bit easier on the blender. And I'm gonna start with probably half this water and we'll see how it goes. This was 500 milliliters of water. And I'm about there. It's a little less than half a pint. Next ingredient is that garlic I talked about. The namesake of the soup that really doesn't deserve it. I think the almonds do. But I'm only adding a half a clove because I don't want the soup to be overwhelmed by a flavor of garlic. And if I added a whole fresh clove in there, it certainly would be. So just half a clove. And I'm gonna blend it just to start. That's it for the first round. The next thing I want to do, add a little bit of salt. I just used about a teaspoon. We need to know now whether it's the thickness we want, thin, or a little bit more water. And I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more water. And when I do that, it means that I've added 400 milliliters of water. And now let's blend it nice and smooth. You can put 
put the oil in as it's blending, but because it's so noisy, I'm just gonna go ahead and add the 60 milliliters of oil all at once. And once this is blended, and you can certainly just put all these ingredients in and mix them all together. I like to sort of check it as I go, and that's why I add a little at a time. I think that's it. We're ready to strain it, add a bit of sherry vinegar to it, and chill it down for a couple of hours in the refrigerator. If you can go three, even better, so it's ready for lunch. You'll find that it's really thick and creamy. And it doesn't leave too much of the bits when we've strained through it, but it does make it a little bit nicer, I think. And you just gently stir it through the strainer a little bit of the extra bits will be left behind. I can smell the almonds, but I can also smell a little of the garlic. Depending on how strong your blender is, this may blend almost to the point where by putting it through the sieve, you've simply made it a little silkier. In my case, that's pretty much what's happened. There's nothing left. We wanna add two tablespoons of sherry vinegar. The importance of the vinegar is you have to have a little acid to balance out flavors and to brighten everything. And this won't so much as dominate the flavor as it will enhance it all with its acidity. And now let me stir that together. <laughs> this is like a heavy cream. It's amazing. I can't wait until it's nice and chilled and we can add some interesting garnishes on it. All right. Now I want to taste it to see what our salt level is. I might add a smidge more salt. Remember that we put in about a teaspoon. I'm going to add another half a teaspoon. The most important thing, whenever you're cooking, and especially in a Spanish kitchen, where it's less about the recipe and more about your experience, just taste it, and taste it through the whole process. It's a pretty classic way to learn about what you're making, and it's a classic way of making sure that it's seasoned just the way you want to have it. I like that better. It's a little bit more balanced. So all we have to do now is put this in the refrigerator. It'll rest at least two hours. Stretch it out if you can to three. And then we'll come back and garnish it in a bit of an unusual way, but it's gonna be really tasty. It's been almost three hours. This soup is perfectly chilled and I put it in a carafe to serve on the table because one of the differences about gazpacho is that instead of putting it in the bowl and then garnishing it for your guests, you garnish the bowl and you serve the soup to let them pour it themselves. The traditional garnish for ajo blanco is green grapes cut in half and decoratively placed on the bottom of the bowl. But we don't grow green grapes here. We do grow green apples and carrots, so I think that's a pretty good option. I'm adding to it some little bits of fried onion for a little bit of crunch. And of course, my theory is if you can layer flavors of the same flavor, it makes it even better, brings out that almondy flavor of this. So I toasted some almonds while we were on break and chopped them up and we're going to garnish that as well. Besides, it makes the kitchen smell really good when you're roasting or toasting nuts. And another fun ingredient, because it's so darn hot out today, I thought a little reminder of snow would be a good idea. And in Spain, coconut is typically created very soft and very fine, and they don't add sweeteners to it. 
So we're gonna put a little snow in the bottom of the bowl, just as a reminder, and of course, a touch of salt, and we'll drizzle the whole thing with olive oil after it's been plated and served on the table. So let's begin this. Now, the best chefs, like Danny Garcia, where I got some of these ideas from, would say, make it perfect. But we're in the country, so it doesn't really matter. It's more about flavors, but I also like the color mixture. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of the carrots in here first. Next, our little green apples. And actually, the combination of almond soup and green apple, I really do favor it over grapes. Somehow it's a little bit more piquant, feels a little better. And now that masterful ingredient, toasted almonds. I'll reserve some for the top as well, but a little bit in the bottom indicates what's coming. And the touch of crunch from the fried onions, it's a really nice texture. And then I'm gonna dust it all off with our coconut snow. And we're ready to take this to the table and serve it up. So let's go. Thanks for joining me in my Spanish kitchen today. I hope you get a chance to make this dish soon, especially during these hot summer days. It's a really nice thing to have. So we're gonna use this carafe, cover up this very pretty little setting that we created for it in the bottom of the bowl, and just pour as much as we'd like. That does it for me, but I'm gonna add a little bit more apple, and a little bit more carrot, just to go with the color theme. And these incredible toasted almonds, I can't get enough of them. And finally, the crunch of a little bit of those fried onions. The snow is already in the bottom, so I probably don't need to decorate the top with snow. Couldn't hurt. Oh yeah, it looks really nice. Thanks a lot for joining me today. I hope you had fun. Please come back soon.